We've all heard it before. It's who you know. Welcome to Social Capital, a weekly podcast that dives into social relationships and why the investment you put into them is so important. Your host, Lori Hybe, will connect with industry-leading professionals and dive into their networking experiences and expert advice. Hey, everybody. Lori Hybe here. Welcome to the Social Capital Podcast. Our show notes are found at socialcapitalpodcast.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at LJ Hybe and on Facebook. This week's guest is Stacy Chalemi. Stacy is a popular, recognizable lifestyle reporter, expert columnist, and health host, author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing, along with 20 other published books. She is the founder of the completeherbalguide.com. Stacy has been on numerous lifestyle and health-related TV and radio programs and is a recognized health and natural remedies expert with over 20 years in experience as a health coach. Stacy has been a guest on the Dr. Oz Show, local news, and numerous radio shows. And today, she's our guest on Social Capital. Stacy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to have you here. Lots of good insights, especially as we approach the holiday season. I'm sure you've got some good, good tips to share there. So um, why don't we dive in right away around that topic? Why is reducing stress so important, especially around the holidays? Well, people don't realize it, but like 60 to 90 percent of all illnesses are caused by our stress related um, illnesses. Many people don't realize that a lot of things such as heart disease, um, stroke, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, depression, many things come from stress. So it's very important to keep your stress level modified and to try to do as best as you can, especially around the holidays, because there's so much going on. You know, people have so much to do along with the holidays and a lot of extra responsibilities that people get very overwhelmed. And a lot of times people's stress really uh, rises. And we have to realize that, you know, in order to stay healthy and in order to accomplish everything we want to get accomplished, we really need to keep that stress level modified. Nice. So how do the foods we eat affect our bodies? The foods have a lot to do with it. Um, You know, we don't realize, but everything we put in our bodies plays a huge toll on our health. As soon as we put foods into our body, our body starts to break these foods down. Now, we live in a society where everything is on the go. It's rush, rush. Everybody is, you know, rushing to do the next thing. And everybody's constantly thinking of the next thing to do. And, you know, a lot of processed foods um, are all over the place. And what happens is when we eat a lot of foods that aren't natural, that are processed, Processed or have a lot of artificial ingredients and ke- chemicals that shouldn't be in foods but are in foods uh, to keep the foods uh, fresher, longer, or look, make them look more plumper. Uh, those those uh, ingredients and those uh, processed foods get in our bodies, and it's very hard for our bodies to break those those chemicals or those artificial ingredients or those foods in general down. And when they do break it down, um, it, a lot of times you feel sluggish. So if you eat something and you you feel really sluggish afterwards, a lot of times it's because your body's having such a hard time really breaking those foods down. And also when, when it, once they get it broken down, if they don't know what to do with this food, they store it. And a lot of times they store it as fat and it goes into our fat cells. And we have, um, that's where a weight gain comes about when you feel fatigue and all these things that we don't want to feel and, and, and deal with. So a lot of times we have to try to really focus on eating healthy the best we can. And a lot of times people will come to me and they'll say, you know, I just don't know where to begin, you know, because it's, a, you know, staying healthy, eating the right foods and changing your lifestyle, especially around the holidays, you want to try to do the best you can so you can stay as healthy and energetic as you can. You know, the best thing to do is, you know, to, to set a little journal for yourself and to set goals for yourself, short term and long term. And when it comes to eating, you know, try to plan, you know, what you want to eat, things that you like that are healthy, that are easy to make, that will fill you and pick out little snacks that are healthy. Like uh, maybe like for instance, a fiber one bar, you know, or a fiber bar or energy bar. Those things can actually fill you when you get hungry, when you want a snack. And th- those things are uh, most for the most part healthy for you and they'll keep you full and they'll keep you, um, you know, satisfied until the next meal. So you can go about and do your responsibilities and do all the things you need to do. Um, so you can get everything accomplished. 
So now that we've got the holidays right front and center here <laughs> mm. and, you know, we've got cookies in the office and there's always something. What are some oh, yeah. ways to improve our holiday eating habits? Well, you know, I always tell people, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be perfect, you know, especially when temptation is all over the place, mm -hmm. and, you know, and there's so many, you know, there's no reason why you can't enjoy yourself. It's just knowing to listen to your body and to, you know, eat reasonable portion sizes. You know, you could always cheat and have fun and have your cookies and have a little cake here and there, but just don't overdo it. You know, a little is fine. It's when we tend to overdo it. Instead of having one cookie, we have six, you know, instead of, uh, uh, eating a regular portion size meal, you know, we don't realize it, but in, in the United States, the portions are so huge. You go to a lot of restaurants and a lot of the restaurants give you enough of food for a last to last three days mm -hmm. that you know, and you don't realize that you're eating so much food and you just keep eating. And if you eat slower, that's a great thing too. It's like during the holidays, if instead of trying to gobble everything up all at once, try to just take a step back and eat slow because when you give, when you eat slow, you give your body time to digest. Digest. And when you give your body time to digest, you're going to feel those full feelings and you're going to know when you're full and when you should just take a rest and, and to stop. Absolutely. I think those are all fantastic tips that you're sharing. Um, and, and I, you know, it's fair to, to no one's perfect. I think that's a great way to open the answer to that question. And, you know, it just it, proportions are, are critical and, and just don't overdo it. And I like the eating slow tip. I think that one's really helpful. Um, thanks for sharing those. So um, the purpose of my show really is all about networking. And my goal is to help alleviate any fears that someone might have when they hear that, that word networking. So can you share with our listeners your most successful or favorite networking experience that you've had? When, you know, for networking, you know, a lot of times people are um, scared to open up. And, you know, when people, you know, everybody has a story, everybody has things to share, everybody can help somebody. And I feel that when we network, um, it's a great experience. So I'll share a little, a quick story with you. Like I had one time um, written um, a book on epilepsy and I taught people how to cope with epilepsy in the book and shared a lot of good tips on how to, to get on with life. And, um, you know, I shared a lot of my own stories and my, and other people's stories in it. And a person um, had walked by one day in uh, Barnes and Nobles and they picked Picked up the book and they were struggling with epilepsy and they were they told me that they were on the verge of suicide and they realized by um reading the book that I shared and the information that I had networked on the internet um, actually helped them. And they realized that there's more to life and they used a lot of my coping techniques to help them deal with epilepsy. And they were able to successfully move on in life. And, you know, people shouldn't be scared to like, open up and to share their, their tips and to share their stories and to share the things that can actually help another individuals. There's always someone out there that really wants to learn and doesn't know how to, you know, to, to get the answers or don't, doesn't know where to begin by networking and by sharing things with other people. We're actually helping each other grow in, in many different ways from business to health to all, all different things, finance and everything. You know, it just, it, everyone has to network and help each other because it's such a big world out there that, you know, we, we only use 10% of our brain by sharing it and helping each other. We can really grow and become a better place and a better person. I think that's great. I love that by networking, um, we're helping people grow. I think that's a really powerful statement. And there's a lot of truth to that. It's it's really giving. And that's what you did in your book is you you shared your stories and experiences and, and you really helped, I'm sure, more than just that one person that approached you and, and helping <laughs> them grow. So as you continue to build your community and your network, how do you stay in front of and best nurture these relationships? You know, what I do is I like to use uh, YouTube and I like to, um, on my website, thecompleteherbalguide.com, I share a lot of articles and I really encourage people to contact me and to ask questions. And I try to do my best to create articles to answer those questions and to help people. And a lot of times I'll even go on and I'll do a video. You know, people will contact me through email and say, you know, I have a question for you. And, you know, they'll give me their question and I'll create a 
video and I'll talk about that, that um, specific topic to help people. And then I'll share it on the internet. I'll, I'll share it on um, Facebook or Twitter, or I'll go to Pinterest and, you know, sh- and throw it out there. And by doing that, you, you know, that person's getting the, the, the information they need. And there's people out there also that are getting the information because, you know, lots of people have similar questions and, you know, this is how, you know, we help each other grow. Like I mentioned earlier. I think that's great. And I love that you're using video and, and leveraging social media. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I, I love how you take the one question that's coming into you and then you're sharing it with many people, because I'm sure there's more than just that one person that has that question that's out there. So you're being a huge resource to your community community overall. That's fantastic. Uh, thank you. You know, I realized like when, when I started doing this, I, I, I've been, um, you know, helping people in the health industry for over 20 years. And as I was um, helping myself and helping others, I realized that there are so many people out there with the same needs and the same questions. And, you know, and that's when I realized that by, you know, how powerful words are, because, you know, I was able to just by some of the things I was doing on the internet and some of the uh, videos and content that I was Sharon, so many people are coming out and saying, wow, this is great. This is what I was looking for. You inspired me, you motivated me. So that's when I really realized there's so many people out there that are looking for the same answers. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's so many people in this world and, and there's so many people that have similar views and similar questions. And that's why networking is so important because, you know, by, by reaching out, you're, you're helping, you know, a, a, a large audience and, you know, you can change someone's life that way well there's so much truth to that um and i I think that's why uh facebook groups have become so powerful actually is because you're you're identifying that common theme of we're all looking for the same answer and we haven't found the right place to do that so you're kind of building this community organically around that same you know question and answer scenario yeah. And, you know, engagement is so important too. like when you when you engage on the Internet or you engage on on a website or in a group on Facebook, you know, other people come out and they give their input. And, you know, sometimes you might find that some people's input might not be the right um answer that you're looking for their information might not actually be right but you know um that's where you know research comes in too if someone gives you a a piece of knowledge you know do a little research on what they told you and and learn more about it so that you can broaden your your knowledge and and to actually become stronger and and understand what your the answers of what you're looking for and you know even become you know and be, be able to get further in in uh in the things that you're you're looking to achieve yeah Really powerful. So what advice would you offer the business professional who's looking to grow their network? You know, it, it takes time. I see a lot of people get frustrated. They try to grow their network and they don't see results right away and they they get frustrated. Um, it takes time and it also, it takes quality. I tell people it's not quantity, it's quality. People, you know, when they see something really good, they're going to stop and they're going to look and they're going to um, engage. Uh, when you just throw things out there, just to throw things out there, um, people are, aren't going to look at it. So it's really important that each piece of of, um, work that you share and each topic that you you write or you do a video on that you make sure it's quality and that you know you make sure that you put time into it because people can recognize that and appreciate that also and I also tell people you know um, pictures is very important also you know to grasp someone's um, attention you really need to choose quality pictures that will really capture a person's eye and get them interested to to actually look at the the content or the video you're trying to share. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, you know, you said the word quality a couple of times when you answered this question. And I think that is a very powerful statement and that the relationship that you're bu- building, you have to have, you genuinely provide quality information and be a resource and, um, and the quality of images, visuals are so important today, both on online and just, you know, when you're trying to get your message out there, it's that that eye candy, what I like to refer to as, that's going to capture the attention of your yeah. audience. 
Really good. So there's a lot of conversation around the digital networking with social media and, and videos and whatnot. Um, but obviously, traditional is, is just as important. Um, but at the end of the day, between digital networking and traditional networking, which one do you find more value in? I think our society is going towards um, more videos and going more digital. Um, you know, as, as time goes on, um, people are looking for a quick answer. People don't like to read as much as they did, um, uh, you know, a while back. They like to really find the answers quick and they want someone to teach them how to do it. So I think video, um, the video era is where everyone is headed to. Um, you know, you really need to um, focus on making quality videos and, you know, I think that's where our society is going. And I'm not saying to nix uh, content. Uh, content is very important, too. But really, you need to focus a lot on videos because that's where our younger generation is going. Even the older generation, we're all headed toward the video era. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of truth to that. And um, and there's trust that's being made because of the quality of the content that you're creating, as, as you spoke to earlier. Definitely. All right, Stacey, if you could go back to your 20-year-old self, what would you tell yourself to do more of, less of, or differently with regards to your professional career? I think um, I probably would have, um, if I was 20 years old again, I probably would have did things a little bit differently where I would have did more public speaking and I would have did um, more videos, um, you know, back in the earlier day. But, you know, that wasn't as popular back then, but I definitely would have did more public speaking. I did a lot of, when in my early 20s, I did a lot of writing. I wrote over 20 books. I, I've written a couple, you know, back then I, I had written, you know, a couple of thousand articles articles just in my 20s and early 30s. And, you know, I really, you know, I think, it, you know, if we had the ability to do videos and pub, I would have did more public speaking and then do more videos too, because I, I really think that especially the public speaking really plays an impact because, you know, when you speak to others, you really, you, you engage with other people, you start to understand what other, your audience really needs and what they really want. And you also build a trust factor and, you know, and then by word of mouth, you know, your popularity and, and your, your, um, your ability to, to uh, make contacts grows. So people really need to see you in action. They really need to see who you're about and to see, you know, you know, how valuable you are to them. So I definitely would have done more public speaking. I, you know, I do a lot more public speaking now than I did when I was younger. But I think that's what I would have uh, focused on in my earlier 20s. Yeah, I think that's really good advice to offer. Um, and just in general, I think public speaking is so important today, especially as you're speaking about, you know, leveraging video. And, and really, that's what you're doing is public speaking, just, you know, either sometimes it's live or it's pre recorded, but you got to get out of that, you know, comfort zone. And, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. That's great, great um, reflection there. Okay, Stacey, I know you've had, um, you know, lots of experiences in your life, but, uh, and, and you've met a ton of fa fascinating people. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the six degrees of separation, who would be the one person that you'd love to connect with? And do you think you could do it within the sixth degree? Um, the, the person I uh, really like to connect with, hmm, let me think of this for a second. Um, I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of one particular person I would actually focus on, on trying to meet. I would like to, um, I would like to, uh, I guess, you know, meet some of the, some of the people who have succeeded well in the health industry and actually get to talk with them and to, to know more about them and to, um, you know, uh, one person I think is really great. I think, uh, Dr. Axe did a great job. Um, he is a, uh, a one, he started out as a chiropractor and he had, his mother had a, uh, a illness, uh, I believe it was cancer. And he tried to find a, a health, uh, way to, you know, a healthy way to help her 
overcome her cancer. And he used what he learned into a career to help others. And I thought that was really fascinating how he took um, his motivation, his passion to help his mother and turned it into an actual career for himself afterwards, after he had helped his mother. And uh, I, I would really like to, I think, meet him and work with him and, and do things with him. He's a, a very fascinating person person. And, um, you know, I've met a lot of people over the years and, you know, there's so many people that, um, you know, have done a remarkable job, um, just taking their, their passion and turning it into a career by, and using, um, digital and then using social media to help others. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there is a lot of people out there that have, have done a remarkable job. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, and I mean, you're right. There's a ton of people that have done fantastic work and um, nothing wrong with uh, reaching out and trying to connect with some of those individuals to really expand and grow yourself personally and professionally. Nice. All right. As someone who's written a ton, I would imagine you do a lot of reading as well. Um, can you share with our listeners some of your um, books or maybe some podcasts that you're listening to right now that you find of value? Um, you know, I, I have done a lot of reading uh, <laughs> over the years. And um, when it, I just recently um, I met uh, with uh, uh, Deepak and he was amazing. He, he, he talks a lot about spirituality and how, you know, understanding ourselves is, is very important. And um, he, I, was, I was listening to one of his uh, seminars and he, you know, and I, I spoke afterwards with him and, you know, he just was a very uh, amazing individual. He, uh, you know, he he talks about listening to um, yourself and understanding yourself. A lot of times we don't take the time out to actually understand who we are, what we're about and what we really want from life. And sometimes, you know, the first thing you need to do in life is, is to understand, you know, who you are and what your passion is, what your mission is, what your goals are. And then, you know, focus on u- using um, those things to actually further yourself in life. And, um, you know, a lot of times our, you know, we, you know, the answers are right in front of us and we don't even realize it. But if we take time out to really understand our surroundings and ourselves, we could actually get more from life than you imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's a lot of truth to that. I think it's really important um, to really understand ourselves, to be able to understand others. Right. It's you can't solve other people's problems without solving your own first. So, um, yeah, he's got some really interesting insights, and I, I appreciate um, him sharing his expertise and, and knowledge overall. All right, so here's your chance to interview me. What is something that you'd like to ask me? Um, my, my question to you would be, you know, what really made you do what you do today? What, you know, how did you get into this uh, position in life? And, and what really drew you to, to want to do um, the, all the things that you do today to help others? Um, you know, this is, it's still a journey that I'm on to some extent, but it's definitely one um, that's evolved over time. And I'd say in the last couple of years, when I was doing some of my own self you know, reflection and and listening to myself as you were just speaking to, I learned that I'm really passionate about educating others. Um, So that's where I've I've gotten into teaching. And I think that's where podcasting um, is a great avenue to do that. Um, And in in the marketing space, that's, you know, where, where my background really lies. I love empowering others to really um, get their message out there, whether it be uh, their entrepreneurial you know, goals that they aspire to achieve or their own personal um, initiatives from, you know, growing in their, their business, um, whatever it may be. So I think that uh, networking in the professional space is one of the best ways to achieve um, your goals, both personally and professionally. And that's kind of where I circled in and put the empowering others to achieve their goals and educating others. Um, Networking was kind of the the common thing there. So that's where that came to be. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. You know, it's so important to network, you know, networking is, is, is very important. I think that's how people, um, by sharing their knowledge with other people and then other people sharing their knowledge, you know, it just grows and, you know, you learn from them, they learn from you and then they share what you, they learn from you with other people. And, and it's just a, an endless cycle that, but it's a positive cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, it helps so many people and do so, so much good for the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent agree with that. So Stacy, any final word or advice to offer our listeners with regards to growing and supporting your network? You know, I, I think it's very important that you, you know, be 100% passionate what you do and to always like be very supportive to other people and give encouragement and motivation and inspiration. And I think that's how you really, you know, by inspiring others and by helping others, you really build a trust factor. You really build some great contacts and you really start to build a, a huge community, um, you know, to, to, to do good. Um, you know, it's very important that you just just, you'd be very passionate about what you want to do. You, you show a lot of, um, you know, um, love for the things that you're trying to uh, accomplish and that you, you don't give up, you know, and, you know, it takes time to grow. It takes time to build that community. It takes time to get to the point you want to get, um, you know, but you never give up always be passionate and always inspire yourself, motivate yourself and motivate and inspire others, you know, and people, you know, I, I get so many people that say, you know, I read your article and, you know, it motivated me so much. Thank you for writing it. And sometimes we don't realize how much we, we actually can change somebody's life. So it's very important that we, you know, do the, our best to, to, you know, show motivation and inspiration to others. I love that. You, I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. You don't know how much you're inspiring someone else, but if you're not putting anything out there, you're not inspiring anyone. I, I, I think it's great to motivate and inspire others. And, and passion is probably one of the easiest ways to do that. If you're passionate about something, it's a lot easier to, to motivate others around that topic. Yeah. And, you know, people sometimes, you know, they, they have, they have, um, great things to share, but they're just fearful of doing it. They're just fearful of opening up or they're fearful of, you know, failure. And, you know, you, in, in life, I believe there's no such thing as failure. As long as you're trying and you're putting it out there, you know, there is no such thing as failure. You know, you may have to change your, your way of doing things, but you know, you'll, you'll eventually get where you want to go if you keep trying. So, you know, I tell people face their fears, go for it. There's nothing to lose and, you know, and to do your best and, and, you know, and you you won't be uh, disappointed. Really good. All right. So Stacey, if anyone was interested in getting in contact with you, what's the best way that they can reach you? They can um, come to my website, thecompleteherbalguide.com, and they can um, just uh, email me right there. Um, I'm right on the website, and they can go and send me a comment and, you know, send me uh, an email, and I'll be sure to get back to them and, and, you know, answer any questions they have. That's fantastic. We will include all that information in the show notes. So if anyone wants to reach out to Stacy, feel free to visit her website. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. This was a great conversation. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Lots of fun. All right. This wraps up our episode of Social Capital. A huge thank you to Stacy for taking the time to connect with us. Join us next week for another great guest as we continue the conversation on networking and building your community. If you need me, Send an email to Lori at socialcapitalpodcast.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. That's all for this episode of the Social Capital Podcast. Visit socialcapitalpodcast.com for show notes, more episodes, and to see who will be on the show next. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next episode.